Proverbs 9, instruct the wise, verse 9. Instruct the wise that they will be wise still. Teach the righteous they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't have the fear of the Lord, you don't, you're not going to get the uh, the knowledge of the, you're not going to get wisdom. Why is fear of the Lord so tied into wisdom? And what is wisdom anyway? Verse 11 says, for through wisdom, your days will be many, your years will be added to your life. Seriously, some people make major mistakes in life because, because of lack of wisdom. And people in the world calls it as a lapse of uh, attention, a lapse of judgment, and at that is so almost like situational perspective. At that moment, you lose that uh, perspective. You lose that judgment call. And it is, it is a horrible thing unless we know, you know, so, so people cannot, it's, it's almost like people cannot hold wisdom of wisdom from God at all times. Nobody can. So that's why it is a journey that we need to continue to walk with the Lord, to know Him, and, and to really get to know Him better, and to be filled with us, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, so you see that through wisdom, your days will be many. You live long because of wisdom of God, and uh, what else? Your years will be added to your life. You see that if you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. Okay, so my, my my big point is wisdom is secondary category, which I would talk uh, next time. But this one, I'm going to talk about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You, you lose wisdom at that particular moment because you lose the fear of God at that particular moment. Recently, we just heard this, uh, what is his name, Steve Lawson, um, you know, quite a well-known uh, pastor preacher. He fell. My goodness, he had an affair for five years uh, with, the, with the lady of in the 20s, and he is 71 years old now. And why this kind of thing? And he preaches holiness, and, and not just him. I'm just not, I'm, it just happened, in, you know, like a couple of days ago. That's why it's fresh in my mind. Twitter is, X is full of it, X, et cetera. And not to, you know, the, the, the thing is, and, and you see these uh, pop stars, you see all these rock concerts, you see... It, they just appear on my Twitter. Sometimes I see some of them and the Instagram too. You cannot help be drawn to the common grace given to, to these people. They are without Christ, but they're very artistic. And they, they sing songs and dance are very, you know, drawing like thousands and thousands of people and, and uh, make a lot of money as well. And that kind of thing. So, so you see that. Unless you have the fear of the Lord residing in your heart, all the love, God is more appealing to you than all these things. There are moments you're going to slip, you know. I also watch Justin Bieber, so he has about 1.7 billion views for some of his songs. I was like, wow, billion. I, I never knew there's such a thing. You can hit a billion views. And uh, he's come to Christ. He shared about his heart. He just put out a new new song called Purpose, I think. And that's talking about he give all to the Lord and uh, the Lord has given him the best gift. And he's, after he has, what he has gone through in life, there's, there's really nothing better than just put everything. And the Lord found his purpose. He lost his purpose in life with his glamour and all these things. You know, if you, if you watch some of his videos. Okay, so... You know, what is a turning point for people like that? That for us to, to maintain, to sustain it, the, the, the what we call sanctification, to keep on going with the Lord so that we don't sleep. Is I call this as the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. The reverence. I'm doing my social ethics class now with Dr. Anderson. He's very good. He talked about the uh, the deep reverence towards the Lord. That that deep reverence is fear of God. That's what a fear of the Lord is. Fear of the Lord is not like afraid of being judged and punished by Him. That is the common man's idea of what fear of God. That's a wrong interpretation of what the scriptures say about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is really a deep reverence. It's just like, 
holding God, holding Christ in such reverence. You revere him. You, you, I always quote that example when, when uh, Israel got out of Egypt, you know, um, in the Exodus. And uh, God killed all these hundreds and thousands of Egyptian army, the chariots and horses thrown into the sea. The song, even Miriam sang about it. And the next day, you know, uh, Israel came to the beach of the, uh, uh, the, the, the Red Sea. They saw hundreds of or thousands of dead bodies and chariots on the, on the sand on the seashore. And they bowed down and worshiped the Lord. Fear of God gripped them. It's not just fear. Fear, neg there's a negative part of the fear, the fear of God for judgment. There's part of it. I do think so. But the positive part of it is just a deep reverence and love. For the Lord, we don't commit sins. We don't give in temptation. We don't entertain temptation. All this because of our deep reverence of God and deep love for God. That, that you love somebody. Relationship is far more powerful than dutifully do it as a duty or do do it as a as affection, as a relation and deep reverence. I don't mean the affection. I'm just love God. You, you you obey God because you love God, but some the love part of it is is has to be intermingled with the, the aspect of uh, deep reverence for God. And now let me give you one more verse and that. Um, okay, so I think there's a lot of stuff. Six six minutes. I'll t do another video on Psalm eighty seven regarding this um, fear of the Lord.